Hey you guys, this is Raphael from ShilohRelics.com. I hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a good day. I'm thankful to be with you again. Like my neighbor Charlie Morris says, every day's a holiday and every meal's a banquet. And I'm glad to get to have a banquet today and I'm glad to get to be with you. Today we're gonna talk about a saber bayonet. And it's just what it sounds like it is. If there's ever been truth in advertising, you're looking at it. This one would actually attached to the end of a rifle so it could be used as a bayonet or you could take it off and that blade is long enough that you could use it as a short sword or a saber. This particular one was made for an interesting gun from the Civil War. In July of 1861, the Whitney uh, Gun Company, in uh, they got a contract to do 10,000 of these. And it's the same Whitney that gets credited for inventing the cotton gin. Some people say he didn't, but he gets credit for it most of the time. He was dead way before then. And his nephews, uh, Eli Whitney Blake and Philos Blake, took the company over. And they realized nobody knew who Blake was, but everybody knew who Whitney was. So they switched it back over and started the uh, selling again under the Whitney name. And it worked because they went on through uh, after the Civil War as well. But they did 10,000 of these, contract July 61. They finished up delivery of them in 1864, so it took them a while to do it. The gun is very distinctive. It looks like this and has two bands. Big, heavy gun, heavy gun. Fires uh, uh, a rifle bullet from the barrel. They were patterned after a French gun. There was a French two-band gun that looks very similar from a distance called a carbine a tigue, T-I-G-E. And depending on if you're in Tennessee, Alabama, or New York, how you say that. But that's the way I say it here because uh, it's my camera we're filming it on. So, 10,000 of them going to the government. The pieces, these were actually made in Hartford, Connecticut, Connecticut? That's a new word. These were made for Whitney in Hartford, Connecticut. Connecticut, Connecticut, Connecticut. <laughs> they were made by a company named Collins & Company. Collins & Company made a lot of really nice uh, blades. They made swords, they made bayonets, and they made them from a lot of cool makers. They made them for... Uh, Colt, they made them for Whitney. They were a good maker. And if you see some of their swords, they made beautiful swords as well. They made some for Tiffany. That's how good they were. They made this one, and as you can see, it's marked at the base. You can still see part of it. And that's an important thing. A lot of people like to see that marking on the blade because it lets you know where they were made. And it's also uh, just a nice little addition onto it. The handle is actually made of a solid piece of cast brass. Along the top of the handle, it has a channel. And what that does, it slides onto the end of the bayonet, or it slides onto the end of the gun in the bar that's on the end of the gun like this. And that way it attaches more securely because if you run that into somebody, you don't want it coming off. How does it hold on? If you notice right here, there is a, a clip that's in it, like this. And you push a button, it lets it go onto it, and it snaps into place, and that holds it intact. Very important piece, it breaks a lot, so it's important that it has it. On the back side of the blade, on the back side of the handle, we have the initials FCW. And that's the inspector mark. You remember we've talked about the pieces had to be approved for military service. This one was approved by Frank C. Warner, W-A-R-N-E-R. -E and he shows up on a lot of naval uh, inspections. So it's got his initials, it's got the maker's mark. It has another stamping up on top that is important. You see that four digit number right here? That is because these didn't always just slide onto the guns. They in theory should, but they didn't always do it. This number would have corresponded with that same number on the gun. 
and the gun it will be marked on the back of the barrel tang, which is the pack, the part past uh, the breech that screws into the stock itself. That's the tang, and it would be stamped with that same four-digit number when it left, so you would know which one went with which gun. This one has another thing that's interesting that most of the time is missing. It's the scabbard. The scabbards on these were made of leather and brass. And the leather, it, because it's such a long blade, that puts a lot of stress on that leather. So it broke fairly easily. And once it's broke, might as well get rid of it. So they chuck it. You don't see them very often. This one is not only still with it, it's complete. The stitching separated a little bit, but that just happens. But on the top mount, the brass piece at the top is called a mount. If you notice, it still has the little stud. And that stud went into a piece on the sailor's belt so it could attach uh, the bayonet to the uh, sailor's belt. So that's nice that it has that. The gun can bring several thousand dollars because there's not that many of them left. Uh, the bayonet, this one in scabbard, can be bought as of today on ShilohRelics.com for $495. It's a lot rarer than that, but rarity doesn't always sell. This one is pretty, and it's going to sell, so get on there and get it. I also have several other kind of saber bayonets, and there's a lot pictures of all of them. There's uh, any time that you want to go on there, I'll always be glad to, if you have an extra question, don't hesitate to ask me. If there's something else you'd like to see on here, if I can accommodate, I will. The other day we did a naval pistol because somebody had asked about it. I listen, I can't always accommodate, but I'll always try, I promise you that. I hope that you guys are doing well. I hope that you get to share some kindness with somebody today. Go out of your way to be kind to somebody because it might be the only kind thing that happens to them all day. But above all, remember that I appreciate you. Go on to YouTube, sign up as a subscriber. We're still gonna give away an original Civil War Cavalry Saber when we hit 1,000 subscribers. I love you guys. I hope y'all have a good day. And remember, always be kind. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.